On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, Escape from the Port of L.A. Hi, I'm your host, Snake Pluskin. No, it's not. It's me. It's Sam Ricoglano. I know, look just like Kurt Russell. We could be twins, but we're not. Instead, welcome to this episode. We're going to be talking about the end of year numbers out from the Port of L.A. How good of a year was it for the Port of L.A.? Well, it's a record year. They reported 9.9 million containers. That's right. Just short of 10 million containers moved in 2022, their second best year. But what does the future hold for the Port of L.A.? As shippers leave the port, as ships leave, as carriers leave, as people move their cargo to the east and Gulf Coast, what is the prognosis for the Port of L.A.? We're going to look at that. Before we go any further, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's go ahead and jump into Escape from the Port of L.A. Here's the story from the Port of L.A., January 19th, at his annual State of the Port address. Port of Los Angeles Executive Director Gene Soroka, looking quite jovial right there, announced cargo volumes of nearly 10 million 20-foot equivalent units for 2022, the second highest in the port's 115-year history. Well, I would think it's high in the 115-year history, considering containerization has only been around since the 1950s. The achievement marks the 23rd consecutive year the Port of Los Angeles has ranked the busiest container port in the nation, however, the port of New York, New Jersey is sn nipping at the heels of the port of Los Angeles. Soroka outlined priorities for 2023, pledging to focus on economic growth and job creation, improving the quality of life for surrounding port communities, which would love not to have tractor trailers stuck on their roads, jamming up local communities, and further sustainable zero emission business operations. Uh, to quote Gene from the conference, over the past few years, as we've risen to each and every challenge, we have become a stronger, more resilient port. The capabilities that we have developed during that time has positioned us well to our growth of market share, fulfill our commitment to create jobs and build, build a better quality of life for our communities. Data infrastructure gives us a tremendous insight into supply chain issues, trends, and process improvement opportunities which were simply not available before. These new tools will add to the stability and growth of America's global trade. All right, let's look at some of the data and details that the Port of LA has released. So here is the annual container statistics put out by the Port. You'll see there that they are down from 2022. 2022 numbers right there, 9,911,159, down from 10,677,610, but definitely a huge increase. Again, 2021, 2022 are just that aberration that we saw as a result of what happened with COVID. If you break down 2022 in further numbers, this is what you see. You'll see the loaded import containers, almost 5 million, 4.975. Uh, the empty imports, just a fraction there, 39,000. The total imports, just over 5 million. And then loaded exports, just paltry, 1.1 million containers exported. And empties are just a massive, 3.7 million out of nearly 4.9 million, your total there. Things to notice on this chart, so real quick, First half of the year, from January, really up and through July, you'll see that the Port of L.A. hung very close to the year previously. They were basically doing the same thing. You had a couple of months that ticked up there. February, you were 7.3% higher. July, 5%. You had a couple of months you were lower, especially in April and May. But then in August is when it goes off the cliff where you just see this huge drop, particularly in August, September, and October, where we saw it into November. There's this big, huge drop. And overall, it's a 7% drop from the previous year. Well, what's causing that? Well, I would argue that there are a lot of issues that are at play here that are causing that. Why in the first half of 2022 we saw increase? Why in the second half we saw a decrease? Well, obviously the issue is we were not importing as much. We saw a slowdown in the economy. So we saw the number of containers coming in slowing down. However, when you look at ports around the United States, particularly the Gulf Coast ports like Houston, the East Coast ports like Savannah, New York, New Jersey, you didn't quite see that number drop as much as you do in the port of LA. 
And one of the things that you don't get in the 50 minute video from the Port of LA on this, which I watched and I'm making it so you don't have to, you should thank me for that. Uh, what you don't hear is the discussion overall about the concern shippers have with the continued relationship between the Pacific Maritime Association that represents the, term, the terminals and the shipping companies and the International Longshore Warehouse Union, which still do not have an agreement. It's been out since June 30th of last year. They're going to be a, over half a year here now without a, an agreement. And the potential for slowdowns and strikes cause concern. Class 1 rail, we've seen issues with the Class 1 railway system. Everything from break-ins to Union Pacific trains in the Alameda corridor to slowdowns because they've gone to this new precision routing, reduced crews, longer trains. All of that has caused havoc in Class 1 rail. Got to remember, anywhere from two-thirds to three-fourths of all cargo into L.A. and Long Beach go by rail. So you have to have that rail system going. AB5, new uh, emission standards for trucks coming into California. And you can't have an engine older than 2010 anymore. The booking system in a lot of the terminals is, to use the term antiquated, doesn't give justice to the word antiquated. You have some modern terminals, LBCT uh, terminal in Long Beach, Traypac in LA, but some of the other ones, man, it's just, it, it's going back in time and it's not efficient. And whereas truck drivers could maybe in the past get two, three runs in and out of the terminals, they're lucky to make one now. They're not making money. There's no profitability. I have people on my previous uh, video I did on the Port of Savannah asking me, should I move to Savannah, leave Southern California, and go uh, haul freight out of Savannah? They're, they're asking me that. And, and really, I'm not the one to ask. But I got to say, things do not look good. I think everyone is escaping from the Port of LA right now. And it's not just LA, it's all up and down the West Coast you see that. And there's some interesting data that just came out in John McCowan's end of year report. So John McCowan over at Blue Alpha Capital does this report. He does a monthly report, quarterly, and an end of year. This is the December end of year report. And I pulled just a few graphs out of his uh, report, which I thought does a great job of summarizing this. So this graph goes all the way back to January of 2017 and takes it all the way up to December of 2022. The blue represents the West Coast. The red represents the East and Gulf Coast. And then obviously combined is the total TEU 20-foot equivalents coming in. So one of the things to notice right here is where you get COVID, that dip off right there, and then all of a sudden it perks back up, breaking over 2 million containers a month coming in to the United States. And now it's dropping back off. And if you look at that level, it takes us back roughly to the 2019 level we were at. But what becomes kind of clear here, and I'll show you in another chart here in a second, is the shift from the West Coast to the East Coast. This chart shows you the difference in the shift of cargo from the West Coast. Go back to early 2017, and you'll see that about 58% of the cargo was coming into the West Coast. The graph there shows you the percentages per month with the three-month trailing average in the red. And what you see is from 2017 here, up until COVID, a fairly steady decrease. A little peaks and troughs here, but overall you're going down at this. It shifts with COVID because of the demand to get cargo in, everything piled into the port of LA and Long Beach. And a lot of that was from non-conference carriers. It was just a report about the fact that non-conference carriers, these are the ships not in the big alliances, the three big alliances with the top nine firms that carry 82% of all the containers afloat. They're being driven out. And what we saw was those non-conference carriers come in, pile into the ports of LA and Long Beach, caused a backlog. They're gone now. And now what you're seeing is that continued drop. But more importantly, it is accelerating. You look back in October of 2022, just over 42% of the containers went into the West Coast versus the East Coast. And some people were predicting, well, it's going to go back, it'll shift back. I don't think it's shifting back at all. I think there's a lot of differences here than what you had back in 2014, 2015. You've got the new lane of the Panama Canal open. You have Neo Panamax vessels. You have ultra large container vessels taking cargo from Asia to Europe and then being put on feeder services. 
Uh, you have the potential for the development of rail on the west coast of Mexico coming into the southern border of the United States. You have cargo being offloaded in Panama, being moved overland and into smaller feeder vessels to feed the Gulf and east coast of the United States. I think there's a lot of issues at play here that should tell the port of LA and Long Beach to be worried that their moment in the sun is fading. And I did not hear that in the talk at all that was given by Gene Soroka. Finally, this little graph, and it's gonna be hard to see, and I apologize, but this is the, the graph that he had here. And I will put this in the show notes, the link over to John's story. But one of the things that this shows is the total number of import containers in 2022 versus the exports. And the key here is a couple of things. So up in here in the imports, LA is leading with almost 5 million imported containers, followed by New York, followed by Long Beach, and then Savannah, Houston. The key here is in a subtotal, East Coast, Gulf Coast versus the West, West Coast. And the East Coast, Gulf Coast is up 12.7 million imported containers versus 11.6 onto the West Coast. That is a jump up of 6% over last year. It's a 13.5 jump up over two years and over 20 years, it's a 6.2% increase. When you look at exports, Long Beach is leading the way on that one, 1.4 million TEUs, but it's followed by Savannah with 1.3 million containers, New York 1.3, and you gotta go all the way down the sixth place to go find LA at 1.1 million containers. And again, the same kind of shift you're seeing with the East Coast and Gulf Coast taking up the majority of the freight, the West Coast, in a minority position. I think going forward, LA and Long Beach has got to really think about what are they going to do to get them back into the position. Understand, if you look at freight rates right now, freight rates are down bottom, down below where they were, but nobody wants to come back into the West Coast. There were some comments in the videos I did on Savannah that were just amazing that, hey, we're going into Savannah now, and Savannah is the place to go, and when Savannah gets back up, I'm going into Jacksonville. Jacksport is a good alternative source for me. I had another one sitting there saying, I'm not going through the West Coast because everything I get gets stuck in Chicago in the rail yards. And so, you know, it's not just the ports themselves, it's the feeder services that are connecting them. And that is the key. I think LA and Long Beach and the entire West Coast has got to do a serious relook at how they're moving freight, the laws that are going into effect in their states and municipalities that have, deal with drayage, and also their relationship with the railways. Uh, the rail lines are essential to get this freight across the country. This is big problems for rail lines like Union Pacific that service Southern California. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, give it a thumbs up, and if you can, contribute to the video. How do you do? Or contribute to the channel, not the video. You can contribute to the channel by hitting that super thanks button below and giving directly to it, or you can head on over to Patreon, become a patron of the page, you become a monthly, yearly subscriber. I'm going to head off now and go watch Escape from New York and Escape from LA, because now I'm, i, I got to see Snake. Until our next episode, this is Sal, signing off.